For today's video, I paid Best Buy's Geek Squad, which is a bit of a stupid name in my opinion. Geek Squad sounds a little bit like a terrible 90s superhero cartoon that was cancelled like three episodes into the first season. But anyway, I paid Geek Squad to build me a shiny new gaming system. Now how we went about this was I sent Anna to the local Best Buy with a 1,300 Canadian drachmi budget for a gaming system. Although there was a little bit of a problem, considering the fact that PC parts are rarer than a comfortable bowel movement in a busy public bathroom, they didn't have core components. So they told us we had to source our own CPU, motherboard and graphics card before they can build us a system. <laughs> so Anna and I played it cool and we took two days before going back so that it wasn't obvious that we lived in a house full of PC components and that this was obviously a sting operation. But anyway, we told them that we had a friend loan us these parts. The $1,300 budget still stood. We were just gonna substitute the parts in later when they became available. So with that, let's have a look at the kind of PC that the Grow Squad built us. And here it is. Now, we're gonna discuss how much it cost and how much they charged for building it and installing windows and stuff like that after we look at what kind of job they did, just to know how outraged to be by the price. Let's talk about the case. They decided to go with a Corsair 220, which is the case that has this front panel design, which really scared and confused Steve from Gamers Nexus. And I get it, like it's, it's a bit of a weird looking front panel design, but at least you've got airflow, you've got three fans in the front pulling fresh air into the case, which means the inside's not gonna resemble a Thai prison in summer. So it's, it's a good start. Uh, with that, let's open it up and see what the inside looks like. Straight off the bat, that's a pretty well put together looking system. I mean, you can see here that there's reasonably effective use of cable management over here at the top as well. They've hidden the cables properly down here as well. Look at that. I mean, yeah, they could have used the hole slightly closer to the motherboard, but it still looks really good. This is a decently put together looking system. Now the parts in here that we recognize are the CPU with the cooler, the graphics card and the motherboard. But other than that, we've got, uh, I think it's a 16 gig kit of DDR4. Let's, the, I think it's the Patriot Viper and it's a 16 gig kit running at 3200 megahertz, which is okay. I mean, for Ryzen, you'd like a little bit faster, but it's not, it's not a train smash which is in dual channel, so that's a lot better than you're gonna get with most pre-built. Uh, that's pretty good. Things mostly seem to be plugged in decently, although I did see up at the top here, the one extra, extra four pin isn't quite clipped down, but that's not a huge deal. Now, as far as the SSDs go, they have a main boot drive in here, which I think is a 500 gig Western Digital Black SN 750, which is a really good NVMe drive. But then they also added a one terabyte mSATA SSD, which is a little bit brave considering the budget, but we'll talk about all of that a bit later. In terms of power supply, they ended up going with this RM750X, which again, considering the budget is very brave and it's not necessary for the components that we have in here. It's like an RX580 and a 3700X. And then with that, let's have a look at the rear cable management, which I'm expecting to be pretty good considering the state of the rest of the system. Looking at the back, it's okay, it's nothing spectacular, but you know, there's a huge amount of cable mess that they had to deal with in a really small case. So I get it, I probably wouldn't have been able to do much of a better job. There are a couple of small things though, like you can see here, there's a fan hub, um, and they didn't actually plug the fans into that, they plugged it into the motherboard in the front. Not a big deal, but you know, it's, it's a little thing. In terms of the additional storage, it's actually a SATA SSD on the back here. Uh, so it's not an M.2 one. And then here you can see they've got two CPU power connectors running up to the motherboard. So that is gonna be pretty important when we're discussing the budget of this system, because that's kind of where they screwed it up a little bit. Yeah, so all in all, it's not too bad. I mean, you know what they say about cable management. If you can put it in the back, dirty's fine. Although when it comes to budgeting, they did kind of screw the pooch on that one a little bit, but we'll discuss that at the end of the video. First, let's fire it up and have a look at the Windows installation, because that is actually an additional service that you have to pay way too much money for. So yeah, let's have a look at what they did with that.
Now, first things first, we need to see if this bad boy works. So... Oh, okay. Oh, so they actually took some time to install some bloatware on it, it seems. Let's see what they've got on here. I mean, that's a bit of a plot twist. Let's see down here. Okay, so they installed... Okay, they've got the, the AMD drivers on here. Okay, so they've got the most recent graphics card drivers on here, which is good job, Best Buy. Well done. Okay, so let's see what Geek Squad support is. Oh, it just, it just takes you to the tech support page on their website. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's see here. What else did they install on here? So we've got... Um, I mean, most of this is the standard Windows affair of crap. So it's just like Acrobat Reader, which, you know, that's that's useful. I get that. And then they've got Google uh, Google Chrome Edge. So yeah, I mean, it's it's this is a reasonable Windows install. I'm going to check the Thermal Paste application because that's weirdly noisy. But anyways, when it comes to the memory... Oof, they actually didn't overclock it. That's a shame. So it's running at 2666 megahertz and that's a 3200 megahertz kit in there. And for Ryzen, that matters. That That is pretty important. Um, so it's a shame that they didn't do that. Naughty Geek Squad. Okay, so I've been gaming for like 20 minutes now and everything seems fine. Temperatures are pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit noisy, but it's not, it's not a big deal. And you could deal with that with like fan curves and stuff. So just out of curiosity, let's see what a Best Buy Thermal Paste application looks like. That's if I can figure out how to get the cooler off. That happens every time. <gasps> no way. Oh, laude. So there's so much thermal paste that it's stuck to the cooler and then in the process of taking it off, the thermal paste has just gone absolutely everywhere. I mean, look, <laughs> look at that. What in the hell? If you also look at the base of the cooler, I mean, they absolutely went to town with the thermal paste application. This is like a full on like thermal paste bukake scene we've got going on here. What the hell? Oh. So that was definitely no more than 50% my fault, that CPU drop. Um, there ended up being more pins bent than I initially realized, but I managed to get the CPU sockable again just by straightening out the pins, but there's still a lot of thermal paste on the pins, which isn't necessarily gonna break anything because thermal paste isn't electrically conductive by design to avoid shorting anything out in this kind of screw up. Uh, but I don't wanna get a bunch of thermal paste in a brand new CPU socket. I really don't know why they used all this thermal paste. But anyway, with that, let's get into how much all of this thermal paste bukake cost us. Because remember I said in the beginning, we went into this build with a stated budget of 1,300 Canadian yen. But then, because of the parts crisis, it meant that we couldn't get our hands on a CPU, a graphics card, and a motherboard. So we had to bring our own, but we told them that we're gonna swap them out. They're just placeholder parts that somebody else is lending us, and we still wanna stick to that 1,300 Canadian and drachmi uh, budget that we had. Well, we ended up spending on the rest of the components and having them actually assemble it, we ended up spending 900 Canadian rubles, which leaves 400 Canadian rand for the actual graphics card, motherboard, and CPU later down the line, which isn't ideal, especially considering some of the choices that they made. Now, the first issue, in my opinion, is that added one terabyte storage SSD for 130 Canadian dollars. Anna said she wanted to play a couple of games on that PC and do some light video editing. Honestly, in my opinion, a 500 gig SSD would have been fine, but then they added what is essentially the cost of a motherboard worth of SSD in there. And then they upgraded from a CX650M power supply to a uh, RM750X power supply, which is a better power supply, but they charged an extra $70. Now, I don't want to spend too much time complaining about getting a better power supply because I think it is a very good investment. 
But the justification that they used was that the motherboard, which was a placeholder by the way, has an 8-pin and a 4-pin CPU power connector, and only the more expensive motherboard had the second CPU EPS power connector or whatever, and that was why they spec'd up the power supply. But you don't need to plug that in, so that's a bit of a weak source reason to spend almost double on a power supply. And then, finally, in terms of how much they actually charged for building the PC, well, the actual assembly of the system, they charged 100 Canadian drachmi for, which is not bad. I mean, I considering the quality quality of the job that they did, I think that that's okay. But then they charged an additional 100 Canadian rubles to install Windows on it. And that doesn't include the Windows key. They charged $100 to install Windows on it, go into Windows for the first time and install Catalyst Control Center and add a link to the Geek Squad website. For a hundred dollars, that's crazy. If that included the Windows key, it would be okay, but then they wanted to charge an additional hundred and eighty dollars on top of the install fee for the Windows key. Two hundred and eighty dollars in total to get Windows installed with a key is kind of madness, if you ask me. In conclusion, yes, they did screw up the budget a bit and they charged an obscene amount for installing Windows, but this went way better than I thought it was gonna go. The fact that they didn't break anything or that I didn't have to get like an exorcist involved in the process is, is honestly better than I thought. And if this is representative of the average Best Buy's PC building quality, then that's very impressive. It probably isn't, but it shows that you can get a decently built system from a Best Buy, even though it is, it is a bit expensive to get it put together by them. Anyway, with that, if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Uh, yeah, and until the next video, bye-bye.